guys, welcome back. Um, this is Tina from Plant a Little Farm Life. I was going to take you outside today, but it has been so rainy. Um, there are some areas of the garden that are just mm, uh, muddy sinkholes. <laughs> um, so I thought today I would go over uh, schedules for homeschooling. <clears throat> so, there are many ways to schedule for homeschooling. First off, you need to remember, this is only what works for you. Do what works for you. Don't worry about what everyone else does. There are many ways to do it. And don't get wrapped up in the uh, minutia of it and um, having all the, the pretty planners and everything, okay? Um, homeschooling is a different kind of a lifestyle. It's not just education at home or um, with parents or grandparents and that. It is a different kind of a lifestyle. And if you are uh, a veteran homeschooler, you will definitely agree. Um, if you, let me first introduce myself a little bit. If you don't know, I have three kids. <clears throat> they are 21, 17, and 15. Um, one is a college graduate with a mechatronics and mechanical engineering degree, and he's talking about going back next year for his electrical engineering, which he just needs a few more classes and he'll have that degree. I have a senior in high school and a sophomore. So um, we have homeschooled from the beginning, so I have um, a little bit of experience under my belt. So I'm going to show you um, kind of an evolution to um, our homeschooling uh, schedulers and planners. I have kept them and you will see why. Let me see. Okay, so that one's looking early on. So I'm going to show you it first. Um, a lot of people, and we did it in the early years, we took um, the composition notebooks or a spiral notebook. And I wrote down what each child needed to do that day. And um, there were times that I would do, say, a month at a time to kind of plan it out. My one tip would be, if you did something like that and went ahead, do not date it. Do it by day one, day two, day three. Um, because if you date it, say, August 25th, September 3rd, if you miss that day and don't get to, say, the book work portion or what you had planned, but you still want to keep going, you're only going to stress yourself out and make yourself feel like you are behind when you're really not. Um, <clears throat> so date it by the days and not by the date, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to show you. This is, let me see if I can find the year on here um, okay oh okay 2017 um, I think this was from uh, Walmart um, it was a five dollar hardback notebook from Walmart it had obviously enough pages um, and this was what I called my master uh, scheduler and in it um, I have, I'll show you, um, index for myself. So I had each child's uh, course of study laid out, which meant I just listed out the publisher and books that I wanted to use for each subject. And then I went into the, the daily lesson plans. Um, I, on the monthlies, um, this is how I kept up. So I had the month taped in there and I didn't do anything fancy, okay? And <clears throat> then I wrote down um, the resources and maybe the science supply list that I would need for that month for any um, things that I would need. So I put all my monthlies up in the front um, just so that I had it all. And then I went so far as to... Um, I listed out, you know, obviously the course of study, and you'll see, I'm going to tell you, this is my daughter's fourth grade curriculum, okay? 
So I just listed out what publisher and um, topics or subjects that they were doing. Um, and I did that for all three kids. And then I typed it up. And to get it in this book, I just printed it out and used washi tape. And I did this for all three of them. Um, <clears throat> and I just did their schedules. And you'll see, uh, let me see if I can get that. I didn't take the time to cover everything. So you can see the subjects across the top. And then I just typed in our goal for the day. Okay. So I didn't do anything crazy, but you can see that the numbers of the day, like day one through 17. Um, and that allowed me to kind of cross it off when they got it done. Um, and that, and this is, So I went through with Abeka and I had to write down some of this, okay? So it just depends on how you schedule. Um, again, that was my daughter's um, with my oldest with Bible. Um, it was just easier and I, you know, with three kids, my hand got tired of writing. So um, he did Kings of Israel from Abeka that year. And so you can see I just listed out what he needed to get done and we just crossed it off as we went um it was nothing fancy uh and um nothing elaborate and there's our uh, apologia <clears throat> so i just copied the schedules and put them all in one place for mom and that worked out for me the same year um i did a schedule for my son and again I think I got this for five bucks at Walmart um, it's just a little like composition -y dot grid notebook and he uh, my oldest had has ADHD um, he's gotten better with age <laughs> uh, non-medicated because he's borderline and we just felt you know that's a whole different thing but we altered his diet and that and just don't do certain things so um, like at the beginning of the year in the first page, I wrote a little like motto or whatever to kind of encourage him throughout the year. Um, and then I had the kids at a certain age start keeping track of their own attendance. And then I put it in their notebooks because that allowed for them to be responsible for that. Um, with my son, um, let's see if I can... Uh, I'm trying to find a good page that isn't like almost obliterated. Okay, so I'll show you a couple pages here. Um, these are different. So these are ones that I went and laid out the week for him for kind of goals. I think this is ninth grade for him. So you can see how I laid it out and then did specific notes for things. Um, <clears throat> we were trying to help him manage his time and that time spent chart at the bottom was a little um, so you can see like I laid out you know the Bible the math language the pen time I was working on his penmanship I wanted him to do it about four times a week so he would just uh, mark it off when he did it and then there's notes on the other page uh, this is a different layout it wasn't anything too fancy but with his ADHD we just needed to change up a little bit from week to week um, and we were just playing around with what what would work for him um, layout wise and I talked with him and uh, just to see what would work um, see so you can see here we did just you know wrote it out day by day straight up and um, kind of just kept going um, his 10th grade year um, so you can see, I just laminated, I printed and laminated this and labeled it for each kid that year. And I gave them color coded, um, cardstock laminated on the back. Um, again, the calendars in the front and, um, I did buy, I have a comb by machine. Um, I've had it for years. So... <clears throat> 
again, um, this force of study, it just helped me keep things in track. Um, he kind of fell off the wagon with checking off his wordly wise that year. We were working on vocabulary. Um, and then we did mystery of history. So I had, in one of my groups, I would found a um, schedule and I just kind of altered it to my liking and it was an Excel sheet. So we just put these in and um, crossed them off as he got them done. And if, um, if things didn't work out that week, we decided if we were going to skip it or whatever. So the rest of his school let's see, was done like this. Uh, these are sheets, I believe, from DonnyYoung.org, and so I just um, scheduled things this way. So you see, it doesn't have to be fancy. Um, I did like the uh, the note side, um, the side with the notes. You'll see that I did, you know, use it to to do notes for them. Um, sometimes it was, hey, you didn't get this done, you need to fix this. Um, you know, if they had a birthday or something like that, um, in addition. So that's how that one worked out. Um, and it was very easy for me to keep up with three kids that way. And everybody was responsible for um, checking off their own work and what they had gotten done. Uh, my daughter did this, uh, this is her eighth grade, so this was two years ago, yeah, two years ago. Um, so we moved over to the student logbook um, format um, a couple years ago. Uh, it just kind of, it was, um, it works for the uh, other two, my younger two. I'm trying to get this, ah! Okay, so this one's a little on the foreign side. <laughs> so what it is, um, is you have your subjects that you write out, okay, and that, yes, it is a backwards notebook. So you have your subjects here, and then you can get the dated or undated and just check off the dates of when you do that subject. Um, I like this one, this column here, because that tells them about how, you know, how time-wise or whatever. And then underneath, you can see it's falling apart. <laughs> um, there's notes that you can write for certain things. Um, and so every so often we would just bundle them together and redo this. Um, and then we use <laughs> uh, this. I think we were doing Saxon at the time. Maybe we were doing teaching textbooks already. It, either one. Um, we would just she would do that and put the the score for that lesson that she got um, to keep track of that. So that was for her main subjects. She at that time was doing sunlight, and so I got the um, student packet schedule thing. I think, and so I just put that. I you know, these are happy planner discs. These are um, a disc bound system. You can do it with the, I think they're tool or something. There's other discs, arc and stuff. Um, I just used what I had on hand at the time. It was easiest. So she just checked off what she did and, you know, did that through for sunlight. Um, then we did, uh, I think this is the botany. Um, yeah, the guest hall is botany. And so they come, they have a um, schedule that comes with their uh, curriculum. And so you can see, she just checked off. And they, these are best done this way because it shows the entire week at one time. Um, so I printed them so that it would show the week all the way across. Um, and she wouldn't have to worry about it. <clears throat> but she just did that all the way across for botany. And then, um, because she is like her mother, <laughs> um, she started keeping track of the books that she was reading and the genre. 
okay, what they um, pertain to. And that worked out for her really well. Um, this is what I printed out for the guest hall that bought me for myself um, so that I could go through and again this is what the master looks like um, for a week and then that way I could keep up she had her own um, what I like about guest hollow is that it's a uh, literature base of course <laughs> But, <clears throat> I put this in the back, but in the front of their schedules for their curriculum, they have a book resource list, and I just, you're, you're able to um, just check off uh, whether you buy it or get it from the library or whatever, um, and I like the fact that, you know, it just helps. They've recently gone back, and I think they've done most of their curriculum. They have... Uh, prioritize the um, books by like these are the ones if you're only doing the top tier I would do book one and two um, top tier ones three is I think recommended four is optional but um, enhancement like so um, I really like how that one worked out so in 2019 and 20 I still had a master schedule because I still had um, three kids <laughs> in school. So I did, I don't remember where I got this from. This could also be from, um, what do you call it, from uh, Donna Young? Um, not 100% sure. Um, let's see, so this is my middle child's eighth grade year. Okay, so it just, the, the resources depended on the year. Um, and what I felt capable of handling with three kids. So um, you can see this is my daughter's first week of the year. Um, and that, so, and we just gradually added things um, <clears throat> and that to it. But it helped me keep track of where everybody was. And I could master schedule it in mine and then write it in theirs. Um, and again, my middle child was doing Mystery of History. At that time so I just printed that out for him my oldest was doing American history and I don't know if you guys are aware um, okay oh I am so glad I found this so my oldest with ADHD has trouble focusing he is not a, um, a big reader he has trouble focusing on you know getting through the pages so if you give him a, a literature book or a heavy textbook it's going to take him years to get through it so what we did was do a lot of audiobooks and videos and a lot of discussion and so I found um, for history I did this for American history world history and government um, so for we, we I created a, a curriculum course for those for him um, with American history, I did, um, I found heartofwisdom.com backslash blog if you're looking, and I got their timeline, and I really was appreciative, and it helped me figure out, <clears throat> excuse me, um, what I should be focusing on and whatnot um, through that time, and so um, I, <laughs> based on reading books and watching mid movies and videos, together so I kind of like averaged out maybe a slower pace reading pace and I added up all the book pages and um, it was a little overboard but hey it worked so you can see I put this in there and that's the front page and he went through and would hit um, so many things throughout each era and would highlight them so I knew what he covered Okay, because again, he's in high school at this point, and they need to be um, pretty self-sufficient um, as far as their work. So he did that, and then I put in my government one, which is 50 hours plus. Um, so he, you know, it just kind of helped me keep things. And then my uh, younger son at the time was in seventh grade I think so he was doing um, 
7th or 8th. He did Crash Course World History, and so I printed that out, and then I found some teacher, um, so I just printed that out for both of us so I could see what he was supposed to be on, and again, we just talked a lot. Um, he had, um, questions. I found a worksheets, just basic worksheets, just to make sure he was paying attention to the videos, um, uh, because I'm telling you, mamas, if you only have one, that's great, God bless you, but when you have multiples and you are bouncing from subject to subject and, um, level to level, sometimes your brain doesn't, um, shift gears or you just get very exhausted, so, um, I have a few more I wanted to show you, um, you do whatever works for you, but sometimes some of us need um, something that works, that, that spells it out for us and just helps double check. Um, so, yeah, a couple more. So this is um, my oldest. So see how um, I just found a different calendar for attendance in the front. And again, the, the comb binding works very well. Um, and the sheets again from Donnie Young. Um, again, I tell you, I love these sheets because they worked out so well. I'm um, trying to flip through to see. I did not didn't pre-plan this. Oh, okay. So, this one is um, American History. And so you can see where I kind of added up, just in case anyone had questions as far as how much time he was spending in that. Um, you know, I tried to add up how many hours he had so we could say, oh, okay, just hit a few in this department or whatever. Um, and if you think that you haven't seen it yet, but yes, my kids doodled in their books. So it's common. Just, you know. Um, <laughs> and that, so, um, you know, that just works out for him. Let me see if I can. These are Donna Young's. I think. It, Outside of what I have done for my daughter with the uh, sunlight and copying those for her or having a second set. Um, okay, so her seventh grade year, which is 20 and 21, um, I think we just figured out at that point in the year, um, you can see there's a lot of blanks. So this obviously stopped working for us, so I just stopped using it in that capacity. So you can see the variety, you, whether you print it out or write it out. Um, I know that there are fancy homeschool planners for teachers and students. Um, there are, uh, I think Happy Planner has a teacher planner and a student planner. Um, you can, by all means, go ahead and get those if that's what works for you. Uh, but if you are on a budget, if you just want down and dirty, simple, then grab a spiral notebook or a composition notebook and just start, you know, writing out what each kid needs to do. Um, just figure out where you want to spend your time um, or how much money you want to spend on certain things. And if your budget allows or you want a little, be a little extra, go ahead and get the um, fancy uh, schedulers with some stickers to put on them even for the younger ones it's fun it gets them excited it gets them to learn about their accountability for their schooling and eventually when you get through the um, elementary years by middle school they should start to be more independent with their scheduling and by high school you're just along for the ride and they're um, more than likely self-propelled. Um, you just give them the, the schoolwork and the directions, the basic directions, and you know, and depending on the kid, you can, you know, my daughter, I ninth grade, I gave her her entire curriculum and I said, here, and she got it done in five, four or five months <laughs> because she doubled and tripled up. It just what worked for her. Now she did do um, 33 4-H projects, so, and, um, you know, with the amount of research that she did and studying she did for her projects that gave um, a lot of more hours towards um, schooling topics and stuff. So, because she did a lot of science-based, a lot of what I would consider um, maybe 
some sort of extracurricular. We haven't figured that out, but with the um, recycling project and the home interiors and things like that, um, she's got something coming. We just haven't figured out, but we'll get that on her transcript soon. Uh, so that is all I have for you for today. If you have any questions or would like to see something specific for homeschooling or maybe even gardening, drop it below a video and I will do my best to get to it for you. Um, I, as I said, I have 14, 15 years of homeschooling behind me, so um, I've been around a little bit of the curriculum and stuff, so if you have questions, I can see and uh, tell you if I have experience with certain curriculums, if you have questions. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If this helped you, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.